welcome everyone to tonight's uh, Animal and Emotions webinar. And I'm going to share my screen. Oh, here it is. Couldn't find it for a second. Here it is. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, tonight's Animal Emotions webinar, we're going to talk uh, about weather because <laughs> we're having it here in Oregon. So I thought, ah, that's a good topic again. A lot of people are having kind of crazy weather these days. <clears throat> and so I thought how it might impact our pets. Um, as I notice a few things with mine just because of the weather. Um, yeah, and so we'll, we'll get into that today. But if you have any more uh, curious about my uh, work, you can check out my website at yourenergyhealer.com. And with that, we'll just get going here. So uh, before we get going, um, in case of an emergency, please call your veterinarian. <laughs> uh, what I can do for you if it's an emergency is I can provide energy support for you and your pet because there's usually a lot of anxiety and nervousness associated with it. And so we can help um, clear some of those emotions out of there and, and just keep the energy flowing, nice, strong healing energy flowing that will support the natural healing abilities of the body uh, and work with your vet's care. And then if you have an aggressive animal, I do need, require that you work with a certified trainer. I'm not a, an animal trainer. Um, I do have tips and things that I've worked that have worked for me that I can share. But again, for something more serious like that, it's really important to work with uh, and work on the behavior as a team approach. I could clear the trapped emotions that may have been created to help um, cause the behavior in the first place, but it, we need to retrain the animal what we do want, which is to be less aggressive, of course. And uh, so that requires uh, training support. Okay, uh, let's just get in. We can uh, make, weave more about me <laughs> in the pitch part. Um, so <laughs> I live up in Oregon and uh, well, we had some weather this today. Thankfully, it was not um, stormy weather. It was just really cold, uh, not that beyond our normal cold for this time of year. And so when we have that kind of weather, there's little extra things we have to do for our pets. But I noticed it can change the behavior, especially, well, um, the cold can change the behavior. My dog seemed to be handling it okay. But for some pets, uh, I have some clients that are living in different parts of the country and different parts of the world, really. And, and they, we've had some behavioral issues that have come up because of um, blizzards and snowstorms, things that have changed their routine, anything that might change their routine. It can um, create behavioral issues, um, anxiety in our pets. They, a lot of them are really driven by their routines. So <laughs> I have one little guy, that um, doesn't like the snow very much. It doesn't, his paws, it bothers his paws. And so uh, it doesn't know where to go potty because the normal potty spots are under the snow. And so they do shovel an area for this poor little guy, but he doesn't like to go in there. So then he doesn't know where to go potty. So sometimes there's accidents <laughs> or, or just more anxiety when he comes in. He's, he's just a little more clingy and showing um, stress. Um, he likes to chew his feet more when he's under a extreme anxiety. And so his the chewing of his feet has increased. So we wanna clear those emotions. So those are, that's a little example of how weather can impact um, our pets. And it's a change in the routine and they don't know what to do. They just don't know what to do. Um, and then, you know, in, in the, if it's really rainy, my guys don't go out very much. If it's too rainy, uh, they're not too crazy about being out in the rain, neither am I, but <laughs> we do go out in it a little bit. But they get bored because they're, again, changes their routine. They don't get as much exercise. Maybe I don't feel like going out for walks or playing ball with them as much. So we get bored. And then a bored dog or a bored cat can get into mischief. Uh, so we need to 
and work on different ideas. So uh, behavioral issues can come up with that. And if they get too much boredom, that too can cause anxiety. So our pets can get anxiety for a lot of different reasons and things that we may not think of as being that big a deal, but to them, any change in, again, any change in their routine can be uh, anxiety provoking. And of course, then we have the bigger storms where there might be thunder and lightning and wind, heavy wind, that can really upset animals and cause a lot of anxiety. So, and that can be true in winter or summer or other times of year, depending on where you live. And so that definitely can cause a lot of anxiety in our pets and of all kinds, you know, horses, uh, my alpaca, whatever your species, if there's thunder and lightning, then that can also, or tornadoes, if you live in those kinds of regions, that can definitely upset our pets, right? And then our own stress, you know, if we're worried about the weather coming up, and if it bothers us and causes us a uh, you know, change in our routine and, and causing us, you know, our own stress, if I worry about trees, <laughs> have a lot of big trees around me, if those, the limbs coming down, I get stressed out, right? So storms can be more stressful to me and all my animals are picking up my stress and anxiety on top of maybe their own concerns. So they're picking up my stress and that can really upset them even more because they're looking to me to be the calm one. And if I'm not calm, then they really are going, oh, this is really bad, right? So our stress can impact them as well. And then there's a number of pets that have experienced really severe storms. Um, I have one a client that uh, survived a hurricane and <clears throat> lost its people during the storm and ne never was reunited with their people for who knows whatever reasons, we don't know why. And, and so it was rehomed to a beautiful home and a lovely people uh, that have um, adopted her. But uh, when storms come, she gets a PTSD response and she gets more abandonment and attachment issues that come out and, and again, a lot of anxiety that comes up. So she has developed a PTSD response, especially if it happens about the same time of year, if a major storm uh, occurs uh, um, at, at the same time of year as the hurricane. They, not that they know months and all that, but they do tend to understand uh, times of year by how much light is in and, and the temperature. Uh, that's what I believe is happening because they certainly don't know what February means. <laughs> um, but they can tell by uh, how cold it is and how much light there is. Uh, if the shorter days or longer days, they kind of sense timing that way. So I do get animals that seem to have uh, a, a PTSD-like response um, based on time of year and weather. So if an extreme weather happens about the same time. So uh, if a big storm happens about the time that the, her, the hurricane occurred, she, this animal gets more anxious and needs recurrent behavior. Not so much behavioral issues um, where she's acting out, but she definitely is moodier and uh, just displaying a lot of anxiety. And so uh, her owner, her person call, contacts me and we do some clearing to help her through that. So those are things to be aware of because we don't, again, who would think that our pets would have PTSD and no timing of the year? <laughs> you know, it's just really amazing what they can have a sense of. So how do we tell if our pets are having anxiety? Well, there's a number of ways. Um, they could be panting. That can be, a, um, if it's not hot out, uh, one of their indications is panting. Um, pacing is another one that they might just can't seem to find a place or they seem to be looking looking for something. So they keep looking in different parts of the house for a place. And a lot of times it looks like they're trying to get under something or behind something, but they like a den. They're looking for a kind of a closed in den place because pets, when they're really afraid, um, want to be in that protected den setting. Having them out full reign of the house when they're really anxious is not necessarily a good thing. Sometimes I'll, I'll work with you and say, well, can you get them into a place where maybe a, a bathroom or a closet 
might feel more protected and safe to them than the entire house. So pacing is another example when our pets are experiencing anxiety. Whining is another one. Uh, if, if their routine has changed, one of their, or mewing a lot uh, could be an indication that they're really upset. Uh, shaking, just trembling, their, their whole body just starts to shake. That's a really good sign, of course. Uh, and like I said, with the one client that likes to chew or excessive grooming uh, for our cats, they might just excessively groom. And of course, then barking is another one. They will bark a lot and it might have a different tone to it. it might be that very urgent kind of a bark, um, not the, might have a great Pyrenees and he has a booming bark. That's not out of anxiety anxiety at all. It's his, I'm, I'm on duty <laughs> bark. It's more like a lighthouse <laughs> letting the ships know that if there's something now, there's, there's a, a shore here. Um, he's letting everybody know he's on duty. So that's not an anxiety, but I can tell when there is something going on because his bark changes. So the bark might change from, again, the normal kind of bark to a little more, maybe a higher pitched and uh, uh, very, uh, incessant parking. And of course, hiding, they might just hide. <clears throat> Another example, they may have found that den spot and they hide, <laughs> they're not coming out for nothing. And then potty issues, that's another example. They, they miss their litter box or they start having accidents in the house. So those are all ex good examples of your pet is experiencing anxiety or stress. So how can we help them? Well. You know, these emotion, our pets have emotions just like we do. Uh, they just don't have as big a vocabulary as an adult human, most adult humans. <laughs> uh, they're more the equivalent of a toddler, but anybody who has seen a toddler have a temper tantrum, <laughs> they can have strong emotions even if they don't have a huge vocabulary of emotions. So uh, our pets can definitely have very strong emotions. Uh, but you know, when we don't know what they're experiencing, it can feel very helpless. And, and, you know, they're trying to tell us something that we just may not quite understand what the heck they're saying. So one of my things that I like to do, and that's where I always start, whether they're communicating to me yet or not. And a lot of times they want to feel what's going on before they start communicating a picture, an image or something that's going on with them. And so by removing these trapped emotions, it just helps them one bond with me a little bit, although I'm not sure they know that I'm human because <laughs> I'm over the phone, but it doesn't matter that they just start opening up more and they feel better by removing some of these trapped emotions. Because emotions are just chemicals that our bodies create and for an experience that we are having or we have had in the past, uh, a thought. Uh, uh, so it, anyway, with our pets, these chemicals can get stuck in their bodies just like they do for us. And, and, um, and then they can create the behavioral issues, but they can also, because they're actual chemicals that are in our body, it, it, it blocks the natural flow of our, our, of our energy system. And so those blockages are where it can help break down and cause physical issues as well. So removing those trapped emotions can have a double benefit of helping with behavioral issues as well as physical issues. So for older pets, uh, that might have arthritis issues, the um, <clears throat> removing of the trapped emotions uh, is really important because that just helps their body feel a little bit better. It, it can knock the pain level down if they have arthritis and they have some discomfort, getting rid of some of those trapped emotions just helps them relax and get that energy to flow better. Uh, and so that's a benefit, <clears throat> of course, for our pets. Um, so things that you can do. That's important. You know, I, you know, I'm happy to to do as much releases as you want me to for your pets, um, and it's <laughs> good for my business, of course. But it's also important to help you feel, um, so you don't feel helpless. Okay. So there's things you can do for your pet, and it's really important that you do some of these things when in between sessions, um, because this can really keep that energy flowing and keep your, uh, uh, your pet, the healing momentum continue moving. It can also help with uh, bonding if you have a new pet that's a rescue pet or any 
anything like that or have that are having issues, it can help them with their confidence level. So if they have um, anxiety issues, also a lot of these tips can help them through those things. Because we may not be able to stop that PTSD response, but what we want to do then is help them get out of it as fast as we can. Okay. And so a lot of these tips can help you do that. So the first thing we can do is just breathe. We tend to breathe more shallow. And so if we can breathe uh, more fully, our pets totally pick that up. It, they pick up our energy. They pick it up faster than we pick it up for ourselves. <laughs> a lot of times they're great mirrors for us, as a matter of fact. But <clears throat> If we can slow our breathing down, take those nice full deep breaths ourselves, it calms us. Again, they're listening to us so they can sense our respiration rate and our heart rate and all those things. If we can slow all those things down and be calmer about it, then they're more likely to go, okay, maybe it's not so bad, not so scary. They're going to feel that energy. If we go in there and feel anxious ourselves, they're totally going to feel that. And that's just going to again, create a negative feedback loop and increase their anxiety. So if nothing else, it just helps them not get more anxious. Okay, so breathing is really important. And then I like to use um, peace and calm. So if, uh, if I'm telling them, and I'm very careful with I, how I word things, because if, for example, with my alpacas, and this is one of my little guys that I had some years ago, Jimbe. Um, but anyway, if you, if I go out and tell my alpacas and they're a little, um, having a little, uh, altercation with each other and I'm near them, and if I tell them don't spit, <laughs> guess what? I get spat on because they don't hear the don't, they just hear spit. So of course they launch it. So I don't want that to happen. That's not really what I want to happen. So I'm very careful on how I word it, I say what I really want is to, for them to keep it in their mouth. So that's exactly what I tell them. I say, you keep that in your mouth, okay? <laughs> or swallow it. I want to swallow it or keep it in your mouth. That's what I want to have happen because I really don't want to be launched and hit with that stuff. So, so that's, I'm very careful about. Same thing about with feet, feet on the ground. I want their feet on the ground instead of saying, don't jump, feet on the ground. Um, or don't kick, instead of saying don't kick, I say feet on the ground, keep those feet on the ground, okay? So again, words matter because they're listening, they're hearing our thoughts, they're seeing what we're picturing as we say it. And so by saying the, and so if we say don't spit, they, we're picturing spit <laughs> and they're gonna launch it. So think about how you're wording things. The other thing that I word carefully is what, what do I wanna tune to? So if I'm saying, don't be anxious, again, <laughs> all they hear is anxious. And my energy here is my master chef and my brain here is ang anxious. And so it brews that chemical. And now I'm transmitting that chemical out of anxiety. That's not what I want to have happen. So I think peace and calm. If I want them to help them feel calmer about whatever's going on, if we're going to the vet, something that's a little scary to them. And I am saying to, in my mind, I'm breathing and then I'm saying to myself, peace and calm. And that truly does help settle them. They feel that and they can calm down. Okay. So it really does work. And you don't have to be an intuitive. You are, we are all trans, little radiators and you will transmit out that energy to them. And our animals are great in that they will like they like to go to where it feels better and peace and calm feels a whole lot better than anxiety. So they may be a lot more likely to get out of, again, our goal is to get them out of that stressed out straight. So if there's a storm going on and they're nervous or something has triggered them, then we can help them get out of it faster by doing these, these techniques. And the other thing you know, is to pet them very lightly, not hard massage, just a little light touch and then do the breathing, nice, slow breathing, and then add in the peace and calm. And if you do one more thing, if they're anxious, just say, release anxiety, release panic, release fear, any of those things, say it with the word release, release what, you're, what they're feeling, and then replace with peace and calm. Release it and then replace. And, and then with the light petting, very light petting and the full breathing, you can pull them out of their anxious, uh, their state of anxiety a whole lot faster. 
again, I have a golden retriever petrified of thunder and big storms. She's the one that shakes and pants and does paces the whole, <laughs> that long list. She does a, a whole lot of them. Uh, it's very clear that she's really anxious, but she will come to me now for help. And by doing some of these techniques, I can get her out of it. It used to take me out a uh, two to three hours to help pull her out of it. Now it can take 10, 15 minutes to get her quieter and she goes finds her hiding place a quiet place where she feels comfortable she lays down and goes to sleep and boy is that a win if i can get her to that place in the 10 to 15 minutes that is a huge win so even with the storm still going on she can find a quiet place so this these steps work and i use them <laughs> so um I, I have to walk the talk for my own pets so <clears throat> um I didn't update this one. Uh, if you would like some support uh, for your pet, uh, I encourage you to use the Quick Cleanse package. If you, especially if you've already worked with me, uh, this four other you get four 15 minute uh, sessions, and uh, we'll clear the trapped emotions, uh, rebalance their energy, communicate with your pet to help reduce their fears and anxiety, uh, work on helping them get the behavior that you do want instead. And then we also support their physical body and, and their natural ability to heal. Um, and so you get four of those sessions and that, that's really good if you've already worked with me. If you haven't, then I'd recommend the starter package and you can check out my various services on my animal page uh, at yourenergyhealer.com. Uh, for future events, uh, you might wanna check out, uh, I have this Saturday, a healing circle. And it's a group online using Zoom, this the same uh, format. And uh, if you haven't attended one of those, it's very powerful for healing. Again, it can be for yourself, your pets, um, loved ones. Uh, you can, uh, we, we put all the energy, all those that we need who need healing in the center of our virtual circle. And, and my guides help do a, a, some serious healing. Um, for all those who need it. It's a guided meditation. It's very relaxing and calming for you. Uh, so I invite you to that. Um, and next Wednesday, we'll have an, another healing circle, no webinar. Uh, the next webinar will be the human version, and that'll be March 9th at 6 p.m. So if you have any other questions, I'm going to open it up now. And I'm going to stop sharing. And I, a number of you did send pictures, so thank you for that. Um, so let me see who I have. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Janet Armstrong, I think it was. You sent me one, right? You can unmute yourself. Yes, I did. Okay, and you sent me Milo. Milo, yes. So let me find Milo here. Here it is. You see that? Oops. There he is. Kitty, kitty. And what's going on with Milo? How can I help? Um, Milo has seizures. Mm. Okay. And, and has he, he, I think he has a lot of anxiety. Okay. And have you had how about how old is the Milo? Milo is two, and the seizure started when he was one. So he's been having them for about a year. And I resisted giving him any medication for a while, but the frequency has increased. So I now have to give him some medication, and it doesn't stop the seizures. It's just supposed to reduce the number. Mm, okay. Hmm. Well, let's see what I can do. Oh, let's see what we can clear um, and then any energy blockage that's causing seizures. A year old, hmm. it's interesting. Oh, there was a release. I just kind of was scanning uh, and I felt a huge release coming down mid back. Um, going to release 
insecurity. Helplessness, clearing up. Lack of control, clearing up. I kind of feel where where the disconnect is in the brain. Must be, I would assume it's up in the brain somewhere that's getting fired off or I don't know. I don't know my anatomy and physiology well enough to pinpoint it, but I can certainly feel where it might be. Hopefully, um, asking Milo if he can show me where it is. Oh, my guides just came in. I can tell because my voice just changed. So my guides have come in. Let me see. Um, oh, okay. So we're going to, oh, he gets a headache. Do you know that? Um, I'm going to try clearing that. Does he have an indication before he gets a a seizure or do the seizures the seizures happen when he's sleeping they don't happen when he's awake they happen when he's sleeping hmm. about being more relaxed or something or oh okay well, when we dream, we go into different, our brain goes into different cycles, right? It's the dream cycle, the alpha waves and stuff that we go into when we go into dream state, right? So something about in that, when he goes into that quieter state is triggering it. So let me see if that can help my guides know when to, what to clear or repair. We might need a, a deeper session, but that's a good information. Oh, and it feels I'm feeling it up at the front of my head, so something maybe up in that area. Mm. Okay, so I'm just going to clear the chakra up that way. I'm going to clear and um, I'm going to clear around the third eye and the crown. I'm feeling a lot of there's a pressure right up in here. Mm, makes that would make sense a little bit. Something is there's a distortion around the third eye area, so. I'm all of a sudden very antsy. There we go. And do, does he have them almost every day then? Or how, how often does he have? They're not daily. They used to be every few weeks. But sometimes he can have multiple seizures in a week. Okay. And has he had any recently? Yes, he has. Okay. Uh, Friday, Friday morning, he had a seizure. And Sunday morning, he had a seizure as well. Okay. Well, all I can tell you is let's just, because they're kind of random, it might be hard to track. But if he has them every few weeks, Maybe we can see if we go beyond a few weeks. Um, of course, if he has one right away, then, then we know that more needs to get cleared. But it, some of what the guides were showing me kind of made sense from what you described. I need to think about it more. And I would like to go into a really deep trance, which is hard to do right now. Um, but um, I don't know if it would help or not. But we have we have gone into brain, <laughs> done some brain and reconnecting before. So... Uh, it might work for him, uh, but I definitely am feeling uh, like a headachey pressure up here. Okay. So, um, so let me know how that works for him. Please. Okay. Thank you very and much. It might it might help. I don't I don't have a I had, didn't get a clue of what 
instigated it. I don't know if he fell on his head, if it was an injury kind of a thing or, um, or, or genetic. It might be even genetic. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure it matters, but we can try and see if we can't remedy it. Um, but let me know. I never know. This is when I never know. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> one clearing does a great thing and, and it fixes it. And other times we need to go in and do more deeper work. So I can keep you posted. I would appreciate it because it's an interesting case. So it might be interesting to keep working on them if, if you're okay. willing. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. When I do get cases like that, it often means that it, I get to grow because it's different and then it helps others. Um, because I wind up getting other animals or people with similar issues quite often when I get a case like that. So getting an opportunity to work on it is um, win-wins for a lot of people. That seems to be how it works in my world. So thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, the next one is Tina. Are you there, Tina? Yes. If you could unmute yeah. Tina. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. And so you wanted me to talk to Fluffy, right? Yeah. And here is Fluffy. There she is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you said she crossed a few years ago? Yeah, she did. Okay. It's just I never knew anything about her because she was a stray. Okay. They don't so always like to share, especially when they're on the other side, they don't care too much about their past life. Um, but I can see if I can't tap into her and just make sure she's okay and if she has any messages for you. Okay. So that's... Okay, she's coming through. Um, he does visit you occasionally. Uh, I'm getting a weird thing with a, it's coming in my left eye. I don't know if anything is related to her left eye or your left eye, something with the left eye. Um, um, well, she was, she's young in that picture, kind of when I first um, had her. Um, she, she was old when she passed away and her eyes, I believe both of them were already kind of clouded over. Okay. So. Hmm. Well, usually when they cross, they can see just fine, but something about the vision. Definitely the left eye just, it keeps coming in as the left eye is like, maybe that left eye came, was failed first or something and she had Maybe she kept hitting things on her left side, <laughs> on walking into things. I don't know what she's trying to communicate by not being able to see. What can you see now? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she does come visit. Um, So she said something about the past life wasn't easy. So she was very grateful to be with you. That was much happier. And um, kind of, I don't know if it was, um, it, it felt more neglectful, not necess not terrible, but not great either, like her base. Some basic needs were met, but some things were not met in her pre previous life, but she definitely could tell the difference. And so that's one thing with rescue animals, a lot of times is they, if they didn't have it so great in the earlier part of their life and then get into a home where they're really well loved, boy, do they appreciate it a lot more, right? Whereas if a, a, a pet comes into our home as a puppy or something they've always had the love from the get-go that's just they just think that's how it's supposed to be right mm -hmm. but but they there definitely is an appreciation and so she had that appreciation with you um 
asking her if there's some other sign. And then she just keeps coming back to the eyes. And I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> it, did you, did she look at it, you uh, eye to eye before she lost your sight or something? Did she go right oh. up to your face? Oh yeah, she was, um, she was great. She was just a really, really happy dog. Um, I had taught her tricks and then taught her tricks just by like sign language. So we had that looking at each other and her following my hand. Okay. Oh, so she's watching. There you go. There's your eye. So she was always looking to you for hand signals. And so she's very connected to you visually. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's why she's sending eyes. So she was watching you a lot very closely because the fun things that she did was that gave you joy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> she might be like my golden shoes. I don't know why she has me do all these things, but it makes her happy. So I do them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but wow. it was that connection that she helped that joy uh, in doing that with you, the tricks and things, because it brought you so much joy. So it was fun. It's a win-win then, because it's like, oh, well, that made her happy. I don't, well, that was easy. Make you happy. <laughs> well, when she when she got older, she was tired of doing the tricks, and so she told me she would just look at me. She'd almost shake her head no, and she would she would bark like a yelp, not a real bark, but like a yelp, like she was saying, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. So uh -huh. She'd be and and she yeah she was um she was more vocal not all the time she wasn't a yappy dog but she did know how to use her voice to to talk and get her point across i suppose <laughs> okay well well she's in a good place and um okay very happy that that she had a good home and a life and she loved you dearly and she does come to visit so she pops in and see sees you whether you see and notice <laughs> her she does come in and check on you from time to time so uh, anything else that I can ask her for you? It's not always a strong signal on the other side, but I can try. Yeah. Um, now, I know that when she passed, it wasn't, it was an accident. It wasn't a very good passing. And I know my ex-husband kind of blames himself. There was a pond that she fell into in the back. And I always just felt so bad for her knowing, I mean, basically she drowned and nobody knew and he found her I wasn't home um and I just always wanted to um tell her sorry that that happened and um you know I just and I hate to say it, but I I just hope she went sooner than you know flopping around in there and I just wanted to tell her sorry for the manner okay. of her passing. Okay. She said, don't worry about it. It's okay. It was how it was supposed to be. And she goes, that was better than suffering um, uh, a long time with the, like a long illness type of a thing. She goes, a lot of these animals it's not like they choose the they choose, but they don't. Um, they prefer passing a certain ways, and sometimes an accident is is a route that they prefer to go by than by illness. And so she's she's okay with it. It's she she doesn't hold any animosity or blame or anything at all for it. It was fine. That was her time. She said it was my time. It's okay. Okay. So it's not. Not to worry about that at all. She says, no, no, no. Okay, that's good. Like I said, she was, that go. She, she was older and she was already, she was starting to have seizures. She had lost a lot of weight. She was starting to, her fur was starting to thin out. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, she would have had some, um, probably some struggles and more pain if she would have stayed living at her age though. So. Right, right. Right. And I mean, so for her, it was faster than what what she was going to face otherwise. So, you no, know, she was 
I think okay. it, she felt like it was um, less painful that way. So she did. She goes, it was, I'm not sure she was that scared even for, for very long, maybe for a second or two. And then she just kind of relaxed and went with it. So um, <clears throat> it's fine. And you know, sometimes our pets are so tuned to us uh, and I've seen this with humans too, they kind of choose who they want to be with them sometimes um, in their passing. And, they, and, and she was kind of tuned into you, uh, both of you, and, and um, knowing how painful it would have been for you to make that decision for her um, and how much grief it was gonna cause you for watching her pass. So she goes, this was easier <laughs> all the way around for all of us because she didn't want to have to see you suffering either. Right. She was already gone. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And now that you bring that up, um, I guess one of the comforting things on that particular day is I was very close to my grandmother and she passed the exact same day that my oh, grandmother had passed. <laughs> so I always felt like, that she my went, grandma was she there. helped your grandma. <laughs> also, so yeah, I guess great. I've seen I've seen that friend. before too, where our pet a pet will go and cross and either help the other one or the other one helps them. Usually, it's the pet that will go help the the other loved one cross so that they have somebody that goes with them on the up to the other side. So yep. So it, that's when I go. Okay, <laughs> timing uh, is important for these things to happen and that's way out of your control that was preordained in some ways I think that's a contract I would say that was more a contract between your grandmother and and uh fluffy and so that's almost when it's like okay <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> yeah yeah no so okay. that well, it's yeah. not something to feel guilty or like you did anything no that's when somebody needed fluffy to go with grandma <laughs> and that was a way to make that happen was to have an accident happen so and to me it's less it's more peaceful than if it were a car or a wild animal or anything like that so uh, drowning this can be very quick and pain, less painful so. thank you all right thank you Mm hmm okay um let's see now i have ann are you on Ann? i don't see ann okay not have been able to get on um let's see i have did i oh jan mulch i think you just sent me a picture right right before we started are you there, Jan? Yes, I am. Can you, you hear me? Yes, I can. And you sent me Bella, right? Bella, yeah. Um, I don't know what I should tell you about her. She is, um, that was this year at Christmas <laughs> um, with another St. Bernard, obviously, <laughs> out in the front yard. Um, but she has a lot of, um, she was a rescue dog, but she's almost nine years old. In a few weeks, she'll be nine. Um, and she does have a lot of medical issues. And I guess I'm just wondering where, and we're, I'm feel like I'm trying to do everything I can for her um, to make her as happy and as comfortable as she can be. So I was just, I guess, wondering how she thinks she's doing or how, is there something I can do in addition? Okay. Well, first thing I'm feeling right away is lower back um, around the hip area with some, probably some arthritis and aches and pains down that way. Um, so that's very common in these bigger animals to start getting uh, hip and back and leg issues. So um, we can try and help remove some of those trapped emotions to help move that energy a little bit. And it kind of feels like a little almost numbness coming down, probably like a sciatica coming down. So the paws are kind of feeling nummy to me, like 
the back back paws feel kind of numb at the toes. So that kind of feels like a pressure or nerve, nerve pain kind of a thing. Um, but let's see what I can release on that. There's definitely some lower back issues. Uh, so helplessness, gonna release that. Um, Even with all of her issues, she wants to act like a puppy, which I guess because she's a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good mentally. You know, attitude is a lot, it means a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, some frustrations. Oh, uh, I, found, I found some trigger spots in the lower back area, kind of where the pelvis, you know, those notches on the pelvis <laughs> and the mid back or lower back area. Mm, are very tender, so release that. So is that frustration? Yeah, I'm releasing the frustration, probably because her body isn't doing what her mind thinks it should do. <laughs> uh, a little defensiveness when they get, so that they can't move as well, they can get a little more defensive. Um, Yeah. Does she get like where she can't make up her mind on things? Um, she's pretty, I was going to say, she seems to be pretty, I want to say, independent and decide what she wants. We have a neighbor that she just loves to go out and see, and she'll watch out the patio window to see if he's out there, if she thinks he's coming out, and she you know, wants to go out there and, and see him. <laughs> you know, she, okay. She, so she definitely has a mind of her own. Well, That's yeah. interesting. She's she's not um, friendly with with many dogs. She's very very selective. Okay. I, we used to have we used to have another one, and she was fine with him because she lived with him since she was a puppy. But um, new dogs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, some of these guardian like dogs, they they kind of have their family and they protect their family and anybody else is an intruder. Um, so unless they're trained from the get go to be friendly with everybody, <laughs> then they're then that's they, that's their job. They have a purpose and a role, so they're just protective. Um, yeah, she had a lot of of um, um, issues. Um, she had a broken leg when she came into rescue, and so she had a lot of she couldn't go to a lot of training classes and socialization because of her medical issues as she was as she was very young, and then even as she got older. She actually, oh, I forgot when you said about the, the hip, I thought, oh, I forgot about that in her low back because she did have both of her ACLs um, ruptured and had to have surgery on them when she was a year and a year and a half old. So, oh, oh gosh, help. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> she's had many things. Yeah, she's had some leg issues that are, she's feeling now the arthritis and some of those issues yeah. from all that. Good that she's had pretty good mobility then despite those issues, because sometimes. She, yeah, she, she really has. She'll, you know, run in the backyard with the dogs next door. And I was like, take it easy, take it easy, you know. And we've restricted, she had been doing some limping on her front right leg um, and um, had x-rays and they said, oh yeah, her elbow looks really bad. So restrict her, you know, walking. So I still have been doing that, um, but she loves to go and she, you know, so we walk to the corner or walk around the circle and go back and then, you know, maybe another short walk at a different time. And Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, recommend you check out a modality called T-Touch, T-T-O-U-C-H. It's a really light touch and that can help keep that energy moving and flowing in those arthritic -y areas. So you can YouTube uh, T-Touch for dogs. And, okay. Uh, there's YouTube's, um, if you do a search, there's some videos of how to do T-touch for your dogs. And again, okay. it's just a super light touch. And, and what it does, it works at the cellular level. It's very calming and relaxing. Uh, but in addition, it really moves the cells around, which tend to get clogged, especially in these older pets, because their energy isn't flowing. They're not as 
able to move as well. And then the arthritis and aches and pains. So it all kind of, it, it just gets really congealed energy. So oh, that okay. really helps get the things moving and, and helps, helps it heal, it feels better. And, you know, I do it on myself if I have a boo-boo <laughs> uh, oh, or, or to, aches I and mean, pain, I, I do it on myself. And, oh. uh, you know, got, get my hands achy. So I do little tea touches on my hands or wherever there's an ouchy and that helps break it up. I so that's to something doing. you can do for your pet and they like, usually like it. If you can, if she likes her ears, um, do the, work the ears, uh -huh. <laughs> but okay. I would work down her whole back and on that, where, uh, on those air, the elbow. And, and I also felt up in that right shoulder too, is a yeah. little ouchy going up into the neck. So all those areas, the hips, the back, the knees, all of it, if she'll let you do it. Um, the tails, I like to work tails as well because the back is all connected to that tail. So working the tail can help kind of get them back in balance. Um, they use the tails like a rudder a lot of times, but they also communicate a lot. So a lot of the trapped emotions are stuck in the tail. Hmm. Okay. Uh, she does uh, like she does like to go to the chiropractor and seems to be uh, excellent. The chiropractors are 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 really great. Um, and I bet acupuncture is similar to like releasing the tea touch. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, works. Uh, you know, uh, the 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 I'm not I don't I'm not that knowledgeable on how acupuncture works, but it will okay. works on the meridians and, and gets signals going uh, okay. up and down the meridian of your highway <laughs> of okay. your system. And so, yeah, it's kind of just, it's another modality that just keep, keeps your energy flowing. I like T-Touch because you can do it for your, for them <laughs> instead sure. of petting. I, I do it. It's also great for animals that are anxious. It helps calm them. So, okay. um, so animals that for any of you folks that we talked about that had anxiety, a lot of anxiety, you want to do the you learn tea touch to do give your uh, pet some tea touch. It will really help them. Uh, and she does like to sit up next to mom on the couch, so that would be a good time. Right for <laughs> for M M Milo, the tea touch might help um, pull out of the um, seizures faster. It might also help rewrite route things so you might try the t-touch for cats you might check out t-touch for cats because that might help as well um it's a really wonderful um modality that, that you because the thing with hiring people like me I, not that i if you wanted to hire me every day that'd be awesome but, but a lot of people you know their budget it doesn't allow for that so um it's something you can do for them and then then hire somebody like me to do the bigger breakup of the trap junk, you know, trapped energy that's stored up that over years, help me, let me help break that up. And then your work helps to keep it from getting restuck again, it just helps keep things moving. And it works great again with your chiropractor. And I work closely with chiropractors too. Like uh, I remove the trapped emotion. And then when the chiropractors adjust, then they, there's room <laughs> for for the adjustment to take you know to sit and take place otherwise the trapped emotion it's an actual thing place and it just pushes it back out so i work closely uh, with it's a good team approach to clear the trapped emotions and then replace it or uh, hey, work with you. worth an acupuncture or a chiropractor i do a lot of work um uh, thank you team approach that way so um Let's see, anything okay, else? You. I'll just see yeah, if Bella has anything else just to say. <laughs> she just said, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. I want to go do something. <laughs> yeah, she's curled up in her crate right now, which she likes. To yeah, do. yeah, but I mean, probably big as either. She is. It, probably because of the limited exercise. Is there, I'm bored. <laughs> So, okay, uh, thank you. you know, they, they don't always understand why we want them to stay calm and quiet. <laughs> they think they should be able to go play. So, hi, board. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. Anybody have anything else before we go into the healing circle? Because we are at the top of the hour. I'm going to stop the recording.